So the next talk is from Jon Ullmann, and uh, he's originally from from Switzerland. Uh, and always, when I think about Jon, uh, what comes to my mind, of course, is his one wheel, uh, which I also had the opportunity to try out uh, once in uh, wha was it in Vienna? In Vienna, yeah. right? <laughs> um, so that that's a really crazy thing. And actually, I played with the thought buying one of myself, uh, but it's not allowed in Germany. That's it, it's not. It's a pity. Oh. Yeah, it's too fast, and it doesn't have uh, a, a backlight, and it doesn't have. <laughs> Oh, so there's regulatory Great. problems, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, <Okay>. like that. <laughs> so um, yeah, that that is always what I uh, con connect with Jon, but of course also um, his work and and what what he likes to talk about about fusion. And um, I know that he's got a lot of experience with fusion. So enjoy the next talk, where it's all about bulletproof fusion. Hi. Why it is so important to take the difficult path of simplicity? Sounds philosophical? Don't worry. We keep it real. Write less bad code. First, let me show something. an electric skateboard. I had already ordered one, but then I became aware of the one wheel, the thing here. The unique thing about this is that I need no remote control, no app, can float over hill and dale, and it feels like an extension of my body. This doesn't mean that this type of vehicle is easy to create. On the contrary, putting a motor underneath a skateboard and controlling the speed with a remote control is certainly easier to build than a board with one wheel that has to balance itself and controlled by weight shifting. This is much more complicated, but the operation is intuitive and infinitely more fun. I think all of you know this thing here. It's a Nespresso capsule. But do you already know the new Nespresso machine? Instead of several buttons where one button can brew one type of coffee and beside all errors, for example, create an espresso in Lungo quantity, there's only one button. The machine reads the barcode on the capsule and it can adjust all attributes. 
five cup sizes from espresso to whole carafe over temperature and brewing time. It is all perfected to the coffee used. It's done. Another question. Why was the iPod so successful? Because it made it easy to browse large music libraries for the first time. And why did the iPhone usher a new era in cell phones? There was already the Nokia communicator. Because it was easy to use. The same with Google. One search box, done. Simple interfaces are more successful and more fun than complicated one. If something can omit it, it is a game for the user as well for the creator of the interface. Already Albert Einstein said, make things simple as possible, but not simpler. But interfaces are not only user interfaces. There are also interfaces in the development. In PHP, for example, there are interfaces as well kind of infusion. There are the properties we are, which are located directly in the component of the top level, as you see here. The href, class and content, they form the interface. However, appearance classes don't. It doesn't matter how you handle it inside the component in the future, as long as the interface remains the same, you're safe. Another good example you can see is a flow pack listable. This checks if collection is an instance of Elasticsearch. If yes, this is used and therefore more performant. Otherwise, flow query is used. Great, isn't it? No property where I have to specify what I'm using. It just checks with the eel helper type instance what is available. As I said, it's not easy to make it simple, but others and you yourself two weeks later will thank you for that. But what is complicated? Everything that is difficult to understand or change is complicated. You recognize this when you have change, have to change something all the time or when errors occur that no one can explain. Dependency and lack of clarity are usually the causes of complexity. So it's about modularization. First, we need to define what a module is. In the context of fusion, this is an eel helper, a flow query operation, a fusion prototype, or an entire package. In general, there are shallow and deep modules. A deep module has a small interface and a large implementation. In the case of shallow module, it's the other way around. Deep modules are generally preferable because they hide more information behind their interfaces. This leads to better information obfuscation. A module that can react automatically to different circumstances without configuration is certainly better than a module where I have to define everything. A module, for example, a teaser prototype, it can be used for news, blog, entries and normal documents is also better than generating a separate prototype for each case. As long as the interface, let's call it API, still fit together and they do not differ too much. 
An important building block for this is the separation of presentation and integration. But more about that later. So, when should modules be merged and when they should be separated? Again, you can apply the rules from earlier. If merging leads to a simpler interface and to the module with a greater depth, it should be preferred. If a module mixes different abstractions, modules should be split apart. If journal purpose and specialized functionality are in the same module, it should be split. More general functionality should be pulled down into the lower layers and more specialized functionality should be pulled up in the upper layers. After all, the saying goes, a module should be do one thing. This can be extended as follows. A module should be one thing, but completely. This can give you an orientation which modules and functions should be merged and which not. Do you know the answer? It depends. I think it's the most used, used answer ever. And the same is in NEOS. What is Node? Depends on where you are. If you are on the top page, Node, Document Node and Site are the same. If you are another page and have selected a content item, all three context variables are different. Handy if you understand the principle. Hell if you don't. There before here again for the overview. The node is the currently selected node. It can be any type of node. The document node is the document of the selected node. And the site is the start page node. This can be easily compared in Fusion. Just say document node equals node. And if it's true, you know you're on the document. You already know where you are. Where we at the next topic, the dear context. Important to know, context is inherited to all child elements. This is great if you want to do that, but in most cases it's avoidable because unpleasant side effects can occur. And thanks to apply and the fusion components, this is no problem. As you can see here, you could easily put the appearance property in the context and then use this context or appearance classes. But it is better to nest the fusion components and use the props appearance. Like that we can avoid to use the context for appearance. And this is just a very, very basic, simple example. But you can adjust this to your needs and you can nest components multiple times. Why AFX is simply ingenious? You may ask yourself, why AFX? There's Fluid after all. Yes, that's right. You can still build your website with Fluid. But the genius besides that you can handle everything in one file is that you can use Fusion prototypes directly in the source code. For example, here we have a link and inside of the link is an icon and it's just a Fusion prototype written as HTML tag, kind of. And the other thing is you don't have to learn the Fluid syntax and the Fusion syntax. You just can use the Fusion syntax in AFX as AFX is nothing different than Fusion. Separate presentation and integration. While we're on the subject, it makes sense to separate presentation and integration. Presentation is what you can do without data from NEOS. For example, without node, document node, site, request, etc. On the one hand, you can then test the design cleanly, for example, with Monocle. The visual components are more versatile. The work is much easier to split between people. And you save 
yourself a lot of trouble defining the caching. I often have seen code where, for example, a tease was simultaneously defined as a content element and as a visual component in another content element with dynamic news. Already only this explanation sounds complicated. complicated. The result was that the same news was displayed three times because Nesta's content element also had a cache entry. At the beginning, it takes a bit to rethink, but believe me, it's worth it. It can help, for example, if you pass data structures to the visual component and fill these, stru these structures with dynamic data in the integration. For example, here we see a teaser module. It receives a data structure with items. These items has the href, image source for the lazy bone, text perhaps, and the headline. An integration in this example would then look perhaps like this. In this component, we get the news nodes, sort them, by hidden before the time. And then we iterate over these news nodes and generate the href, the image source, the headline, the text and the alternative text. And we filter everything that we make show sure that the image source and the headline is set. And then we pass this to the before defined presentation component. And at the end, we define the caching, so if a news gets updated, this component also gets updated. One thing more about the cache entry. It is best to always write immediately up an integration. Often you think, I will do it at the end, but you have to do it anyway. And at the moment you write the integration, you have the best overview. Besides, this is also a document, document which nodes and values the integration accesses. Everyone after you, including your own me in two weeks, would thank you for that. Explain what's going on, especially with prototypes, which are pure presentation components. It is not always obvious what type and or value is allowed for a property. Of course, you can solve this with comments. But here I would like to recommend a package called PropTypes Fusion from the package factory. Even if you don't know the package, just reading it is self-explanatory. It does not explain how, in which way the implementation works, but only what is expected and allowed. Perfect. An exciting approach will be to define prop types first, to consider exactly what the API of Fusion prototype should look like. I think this would help to make the modules less broad and more in depth of the implementation. I know this is kind of a crazy idea, but let's try it out if it works. However, when it comes to explanation of an implementation, it should not be written at the top level, but rather where the implementation happens. They add precision and explain the what and why of a particular code in detail. A very nice example, which is not in Fuse, but in a PHP class can be seen on the image service from the Pretty Embed helper. Everybody of you know Sebastian Kurfürst. And he's not only solved the problem of this, of this service, he also explained it directly in the code exactly what happens and why it's solved like that. Do it, fix it, break it. The best modules are not the first costs, but the ones that have been designed several times a dare statement, I know. But we also rebuilt the UI three times until it really fit. 
sometimes it's just good to think around the corner. After all, our head is round, so we can change the direction of thinking. Especially in the web development, an enormous amount of happens that we are all challenged repeatedly to learn new things and solve problems in a new way. Also for us in the NEOS universe, a lot has happened in the last years. Best practice have been repeatedly thrown overboard and replaced by new approaches. But isn't that what makes development so exciting? We live in enormously exciting but equally challenging time. Never before so much has been possible and never before has humanity faced such challenges like climate change. I am firmly convinced that those who constantly overthrow principles and go new ways can change this world and those who not move on the usual path but go ways so that these arise. Quite interesting also to see uh, the place where John lives, I think, and uh, also about the concepts. So did you understand a word, Tobias? <laughs> <laughs> the beginning was awesome. I was laughing. I was watching the talk and how John was riding around the woods on his one wheel. Um, <laughs> I think it was one of the best introductions into the video. I was yeah. like, oh, I can watch that for another hour probably. Did you ever try that? Or would you would you want to try it? I I I, I think uh, at the sprint in Vienna um, you where you tried it as well. I did too, and uh, it it's difficult. I I found it difficult at least. Um, John looks like a you know like he was born with it or something. Um, that was that was really cool. Thanks so much, John. Can you hear us? Yes. How, how long did you take? Did it take you to? Uh, ride these these uh, paths in the forest with a one wheel. Not so long. I think if, if you experience a bit, you just go and go and ride. So <laughs> all right, very cool. So yeah, that was quite interesting. It was um, kind of fusion architecture. Could you could you? Name yes. it's fusion architecture, right? And it re reminded me a bit uh, of um, very general um, development paradigms, which, which you know, like uh, it depends. You mentioned, of course, that that's a very typical thing a developer would ask or an architect would ask uh, itself. So, how do you think? How how different is um, developing fusion actually from from other programming language? Typical. Uh, PHP and other programming languages, like the methodologies you use there, refactoring and things like that? I think the first thing is that um, Fusion is much more similar to JavaScript than to PHP. Um, how you access the stuff and all these kind of things. And um, at the same side, uh, the prototype is always sandboxes. It's in a sandbox, so it doesn't destroy something other. So that's uh, a cool feature. Yes, and how to refactor? I think do, that do would be use, another talk. <laughs> do you use any any refactoring techniques? I mean, um, also other design principles like, <laughs> yeah, model view controller, model view presenter comes to mind when you when you said you need to. Uh, um, be aware at least uh, where is your presentation and where is your data and so on. It is not. Yeah, I mean, so it's, I, I, hmm? yeah, I refactored uh, some time ago uh, the web page from my father, and then uh, I just split the integration and the presentation part. And um, I think that's one of the the main thing because if you have that, it's easier to refactor in in all ways because. You know, okay, it's just uh, getting the data, and here is displaying the data. Mm. And if you have split that, it's much easier to change later on when you want to change something. And reusing your components and so on, I guess, right? Yes, of course. Yeah. Yes. Okay. 
Well, thank you, John. That that was pretty insightful in many ways. Uh, and yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to using more more of that soon again when I'm back to Fusion. Thank you, John. Yeah. <laughs> With your crazy front end skills, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Oh, that's awesome. Thanks very much, John, for uh, this uh, yeah Fusion Architecture uh, presentation.